Alright, this video is going to be about completing the square, which is uh, kind of an important topic. And uh, so what we'll start with is, let's kind of work backwards. So let's say that we have a, uh, a, mon a binomial, rather, that we want to square. So if we square that out, we're going to get um, the first thing squared, then you multiply them together, you get negative a times x and double it, so negative 2ax, and then the square of the last, so plus a squared. Um, and what you might notice is that negative uh, 2a right there is twice whatever that was, um, and then that right there is the square of the last thing. So let's look at it from this perspective. If we had uh, x plus a squared, it would be the square of the first thing, then we multiply them together, get a times x, double it, so plus 2ax, and then finally square the last thing, get a squared. Um, and the same thing happens. So uh, this middle term here is 2a, and uh, that's twice whatever that was. So when it was x minus a, it was negative 2a, and when it's x plus a, it's uh, just plus 2a. Um, we're going to kind of, and there's our last squared part. We're going to use that um, to complete the square. Use that idea to kind of reverse course. So if we have x squared plus 6x, what we want to do is complete the square on this. So we want to end up with uh, something that looks like the quantity blah, blah, and then squared. Um, so this thing right here, the plus 6x, um, should be 2a. So 2a is equal to 6, which means that a must have been equal to 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, complete the square, right? So I square 3 and add it. But I can't just do that, so at the same time, I'm going to subtract it. So I have uh, plus 9 and then minus 9, and if you just look at that, that equals 0. So we changed the way it looked, but we didn't change the value of it. Um, these three things grouped together are a perfect square trinomial, so I can factor it. And if you do it correctly, it's always going to factor into um, what I've underlined there. So we have x squared, so square root of that is x. And then you're always just going to add half of the coefficient of x, so uh, half of positive 6 is positive 3, so we're going to add 3 squared, and then there's still that minus 9. Um, so to complete the square on that, we would get that. Let's look at another one. So here we have y equals x squared plus 7x. Um, so same idea. Uh, so plus 7 here is equal to 2a, so 2a is 7, which means that a must have been 7 halves, so it's a fraction. Um, so what I'm going to do is I want to add 7 halves squared, so square 7 halves and add it to the right-hand side, but I can't just do that, so I'm going to add it to both sides. So I get plus 49 over 4, and then equals x squared plus 7x, and then, again, plus 49 over 4. So the equation is still balanced. I didn't do anything to one side that I didn't do to the other. Um, now it's just a matter of factoring. So that's a perfect square trinomial. That's the whole point of completing the squares, that you end up with that. Um, so the left-hand side, nothing changes. And then here I'm going to get uh, the quantity, uh, the squared of x squared is x. And then half of 7 is 7 halves, so plus 7 halves squared. And then usually what you do is solve for y. So I get y equals the quantity x plus 7 halves squared, and then minus 49 over 4. Let's look at another one. So this one's a little different. It has x squared and a y squared. So You'll see this later on in math. Um, I mean, there's no reason you can't do it right now. That's why we're doing the example. But uh, the first thing you do is you rearrange it so all the x things are together and all the y things are together. And you can see that I skipped some space there. The reason I skipped space is because I want to complete the square. So I'm just going to have to do it twice, once for x and once for y. So let's do that. So half of negative 6 is negative 3. If I square that, I get plus 9, so I have to do that to both sides, so I'll put plus 9 over there. I look at uh, the coefficient of the y to the first term, which is 8, and half of that is 4 squared, it's 16, so I'll add 16 there, add 16 there, and now what I have is two perfect square trinomials on the left side. So, um, the square root of x squared is x, half of minus 6 is negative 3, so I'm going to do minus 3, and then squared, and that takes care of that trinomial. And then plus, and we'll get the square root of y squared is y. And half of plus 8 is plus 4. And then squared. And then that's going to take care of that one. And then on the other side we have 25. There's really nothing more I can do with that. Uh, later in life you might find out that that's actually the equation of a circle. Uh, but you might not know that yet. And let's look at another example. I'm going to do this one two different ways. 
So now I don't have a leading coefficient that's 1, so that's a little more complicated. Um, so what I'll do is I'll move the constant term over to the other side. Constants are just kind of in the way. Uh, they don't really have anything to do with the completing the square process. They get involved at the end, but not right now, so get it out of the way. Um, next thing I could do to get a 1 is the coefficient of x squared. I could divide both sides by 2, so I'm going to do that. So I get x squared plus 3x equals um, y minus 5 divided by 2. So now on the left-hand side, I can complete the square the way I've been doing. So I got x squared plus 3x. Um, I'm going to leave a little space there. Okay, so I want half of 3 is 3 halves, and if I square that, it's 9 fourths. So I'm going to add 9 fourths and add it to both sides to keep the balance. Left-hand side now is a perfect square trinomial. Um, so the square root of x squared is x, and then I want half of plus 3, which is plus 3 halves and it's the quantity squared, and then that's going to be equal to uh, this right-hand side. So now what I want to do is try to solve for y. So I'm going to clear out the denominator of y. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So I get 2, the quantity x plus 3 squared equals y minus 5, and then plus 9 over 2, because I multiplied by 2. And uh, negative 5 is actually negative 10 halves, so I can rewrite this a little bit. So it's y minus 1 half, um, and where that came from was I had y minus 10 halves plus 9 halves, so that's y minus 1 half. And I moved the y to the left-hand side because usually when you solve for y, it's on the left-hand side. Um, and then to finish this off, I want to solve for y. So I'm just going to add 1 half to both sides. And there you have it. All right, so that's one way of doing it, but it's not actually the way that I would do it if I were solving this on my own. So what I'm going to do is solve this uh, again in a slightly different way. So if I were solving this on my own, uh, having gotten good at this, what I do in my first step is I factor out the 2, but I don't divide by it. So I'm going to factor the 2 out on the left-hand side um, and leave it there. And uh, my one parenthesis there has the wrong color. Uh, so embarrassing. Um, all right, so now what I'm going to do is complete the square inside the parentheses. So half of 3 is 3 halves, square it, and you get 9 fourths, so I'm going to add 9 fourths inside the parentheses. Now the question is, what do I do on the right-hand side? So I've added seemingly 9 fourths on the left-hand side, but since I had to multiply it by 2, I didn't add 9 fourths to the left-hand side. I actually added 9 halves, which is what you get when you multiply by uh, 2 and 9 fourths. So on the right-hand side, I'm going to add 9 halves. So this is a little more advanced. Uh, if you're not comfortable with it, just don't do it. Um, and go and do the other method, which there's nothing wrong with. Um, but anyway, now I am uh, pretty much where I was. So half of, or rather, the square root of x squared is x. And then half of plus 3 is plus 3 halves. Quantity squared equals. And then uh, minus 5 is negative 10 halves. Plus 9 halves is negative 1 half like that. And then if I go through and solve for y again, I end up in the same place. And uh, that's how you complete the square. So I hope you found this helpful, and uh, good luck.